Good evening, and welcome to the 2015 Novi Police and Fire Awards Ceremony. My name is David Malloy, and I have the distinct honor and privilege of serving as the Director of Public Safety and the Chief of Police here for the City of Novi. I'd like to thank Cadet Eric Carlamusto and his partner, Mr. Alastair Hill, for playing the bagpipes prior to our ceremony this evening. Thank you. One of the greatest honors I have and I'm allowed is to be able to lead and serve alongside these fine men and women we will recognize and honor here tonight. This is truly the highest honor one could imagine. This evening, we join together to recognize several outstanding individuals who have performed valiantly and professionally in service to our Novi community. But I think what is equally as important is the fact we have two very professional departments who work together seamlessly to deliver emergency services to all residences and businesses throughout our community. We come together with common values of honesty, integrity, professionalism, honor, service, and duty. And these are not just words, but the core values all members of the Novi Fire and Police Departments possess and practice. I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize some of our elected leaders and my department colleagues who are here with us this evening. Joining us this evening from our City Council, we have Councilmember Doreen Popard, Councilmember Laura Casey, Councilmember Gwen Markham. Thank you for coming. I'm also very honored to introduce our new city manager, Pete Auger, and our assistant city manager, Victor Cardenas. I'd also like to introduce and thank Cheryl Walsh and her team for assisting in putting this on tonight. Cheryl, thank you. And if we could all please stand and begin this ceremony with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to call upon our police and fire chaplain, Michael Zirkich, to deliver our invocation. Let us bow our heads. Lord, you've given a society and community that requires many things. And yet you found gifted men and women to serve this community, many times selflessly, with hearts of gold. Lord, please be with them, keep them safe, give them the wisdom on how to enact our laws and safety standards in a way that is humane and loving, and that we keep this community one that is stellar in your eyes and amongst all the residents that they serve. Thank you again for the men and women of the police department, fire department, detectives, the dispatchers, the administrative staff, and all the rest of the city administration for their difficulties that they have to manage each and every day require excellent thinking and a selfless heart. So thank you, Lord, for the dedication of them, not only those honored here tonight, but for all those that stand before you and are, can't be here this evening. We say this to your son. Amen. As I call your name this evening, if you could please join me on the raised platform by entering from my left and then exiting from the right. Firefighters and police officers take risks and suffer inconvenience to protect the lives, defend civil liberties, secure the safety of fellow citizens, and they endure such risks and dangers and tolerate such inconveniences on behalf of total strangers on a daily basis. Consequently, the role of a public safety profession is one of the more noble and selfless occupations in our society. Making a difference in the quality of life is an opportunity that pol policing and firefighting provides and few other professions can offer. A public affirmation of adhering to an oath of honor 
is a powerful vehicle demonstrating our ethical standards. To be successful at enhancing integrity within an organization, leaders must ensure the oath is recited frequently, displayed prominently, as well as ensuring ethical mentoring and role modeling are consistent, frequent, and visible. If I could please have all members of the Novi Fire Department please stand and raise your right hand and repeat after me. On my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. I will always maintain a proficiency in the art and science of fire engineering and emergency medical services. I promise to faithfully and professionally honor my agency and the community I serve. I solemnly swear. Thank you. And now, if I could please have all the men and women of the Novi Police Department please stand, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. On my honor, on my honor. I will never betray my badge, I will never betray my, badge. My, integrity, my integrity, my character, my character or, the public trust. or the public trust. I will always have the courage, have the courage. to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. I will always uphold the Constitution my community, my community, and the agency I serve. Agency I serve. Thank you. <laughs> the City of Novi, and in particular the police and fire departments, have always held the very highest standards in terms of academic performance, academic achievement, and the personal growth and development of all of our men and women. Tonight I'm honored to recognize Sergeant Michael Warren, who in December of 2014 received a master's degree in criminal justice with a concentration in public administration from Liberty University. He earned this degree obviously while working full-time and maintaining a perfect 4.0 grade point average. This is not Sergeant Warren's second, this is not his first degree, this is his second master's degree. He earned his master's in business administration in August of 2008. Unfortunately, Sergeant Warren could not be here with us this evening due to teaching commitments at South University, but please join me in recognizing him for this outstanding achievement. If I could please have Captain Mark Tyson join me, please. We are very pleased to announce the graduation of Captain Mark Tyson from the 16th class of the Eastern Michigan University School of Fire Staff and Command on October 24th of 2014. Captain Tyson joined 44 fire department executives representing 32 communities throughout the state of Michigan who participated in this very rigorous 10-month program. The School of Fire Staff and Command has allowed Captain Tyson not only to improve his leadership skills but also his problem-solving ability. The interaction this program affords he and other members in the fire service allows them to be better leaders, better mentors, and be better role models for the next generation of the fire service. The Fire Staff and Command program provides upper level academic instruction in several core competencies. This 350 hour program covers major topics including leadership, marketing, management, fire administration, criminal and civil law, fiscal theory, technology, and now homeland security. For this, his commitment and dedication to not only furthering his education, but for completing this extensive program to enhance his leadership abilities, please join me as we present Captain Mark Tyson with the Staff and Command Ward and thank him for his dedication to the fire service and the commitment to our community. Congratulations, Mark. Thanks, Chief. Sergeant Adam Elson.
Much like in the fire service, Eastern Michigan University also hosts the police staff in command. And this year was no different. We were very honored to have Sergeant Adam Elson represent the Novi Police Department as he too participated in this very rigorous 10-month program. He participated with over 30 agencies from across the state of Michigan as they learned their instruction in strategic planning, budgeting, communications, community relations, organizational change management, and leadership strategies. This school has graduate, graduated over 3,000 police executives since 1995. This year, Sergeant Elson attended this program and finished third in his class and was honored and selected as the department chaplain. Please join me in recognizing Sergeant Adam Elson for his continual growth and development in completing the EMU School of Police Staff and Command. Officer Amanda Kulikowski and Officer Michael Daisley. Officer Kulikowski could not be here with, with us this evening. On June 22nd, Officers Kulikowski and Daisley were dispatched to a residence on Georgia Drive in the city of Novi to investigate a marijuana complaint. While at the scene, they spoke with the homeowner who gave the officers consent to search the residence. While searching one of the bedrooms, the officers located a large quantity of Marlboro and Newport cigarettes. The officers were aware of several recent tobacco shops that had been victim of burglaries in nearby Lyon Township. The most recent incident had occurred just days earlier at a tobacco outlet in New Hudson. The officers conducted an extensive interview of the homeowner, which led to the arrest of Gabriel Nolan, who was charged with breaking and entering for not only the tobacco outlet in New Hudson, but other commercial break-ins in the area. Nolan is currently awaiting trial for these felony crimes. Officers Kulikowski and Daisley are to be commended for their thorough investigation and keen awareness which led to the arrest of this felony suspect. Please join me in recognizing them with a department letter of commendation. Firefighter Dan Schultz. I don't believe Dan is here with us this evening. Officer Andy Hudacek. Fire Protection Officer Jeff Lockman. With the request for child safety seat inspections increasing, Fire Protection Officer Jeff Lockman took it upon himself and offered to attend the intense four-day child passenger seat program and became a certified car seat technician. Fire Protection Officer Lockman has assisted the Novi Fire Department to property, properly and safely install over 243 car seats for Novi community members in 2014. This program has seen a dramatic increase over the past few years, and without the dedication of all of our men and women, and in particular, Fire Protection Officer Lockman, this and many other specialty programs would not be possible. For this, I would like to recognize Fire Protection Officer Jeff Lockman with a letter of commendation and a thank you for all of his hard work and dedication to citizen safety in keeping our Novi safe. Special Agent Stan Brew. Over the course of the past few years, members of the Police Department's investigative section have developed a close working relationship with Special Agent Brew of the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Agent Brew specializes in the forensic analysis of cell phone records and data. His skills have helped uncover court-authorized evidence, which has led to the identification and arrest of several criminals who have committed crimes here in Novi. 
Here are a few cases that Special Agent Brew has contributed to. In October of 2012, Agent Brew helped develop evidence which led to the arrest and conviction of two suspects for breaking and entering at the Novi Town and Country Eye Care Clinic on Novi Road near Nine Mile. During the winter of 2013, there are a series of home invasions in the Chase Farm subdivision. A suspect was developed and he was put under surveillance. Over the course of several days, officers from our Sonic surveillance team followed the suspect and arrested him while he was performing a home invasion in the city of Rochester Hills. Agent Brew did a historical analysis of the suspect phone, which was seized at the time of his arrest. This analysis put the suspect in the area during the Novi home invasions. As a result of this information, the suspect was charged and convicted with multiple home invasions in Novi. In January of 2014, Agent Brew assisted Novi investigators with the Bernice Schaufel homicide. His analysis assisted investigators in determining several unanswered questions throughout the ongoing case to include placing the suspect in the area of the crime when it was committed and his travel patterns following the commission of the crime. Special Agent Brew has spent countless hours assisting our detectives of the Novi Police Department, and because of his work, several cases have resulted in successful prosecution. The Novi Police Department is honored to recognize our federal partner in law enforcement, Special Agent Stan Brew, with a Department Letter of Commendation. Congratulations. <laughs> Sir, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Firefighter Matt Blamey and Firefighter Ron Barrett. <clears throat> the Novi Fire Department became involved with the Community Emergency Response Team, or CERT training, in 2007. In 2010, the need for greater help was recognized by our emergency management team with a call for additional instructors to assist in the initial training and certification, as well as providing continued education for our CERT team members. Paid on call firefighters Matt Blamey and Ron Barrett immediately volunteered and accepted the challenge, completing the Train the Trainer course, and since then, they have assisted in training several hundred volunteers from Novi's CERT team. These firefighters have also taken the time to become CPR and first aid instructors and provide this training in the evening and on weekends as scheduled by our training office for not only Novi residents but also businesses throughout our community. For this and everything they do, I would like to recognize firefighters Blamey and Barrett with a letter of commendation and offer my personal thanks for all of your hard work and dedication towards departmental excellence and keeping our community members trained to the highest standards. Well done, gentlemen. <laughs> Officer Jim Brandon. The Community Oriented Policing Award is granted to officers who have displayed exemplary service in the field of community policing throughout the city of Novi. In 2012, the Novi Police Department implemented frequent school visits by our community policing officers following the tragedies of the Newtown, Connecticut school shooting. Officer Brandon completely embraced this initiative and began visiting the five schools in his patrol sector on a regular basis. During his visits, Officer Brandon interacts with the staff the students, the administrators, and walks around the building to ensure a safe and secure environment. And while this was unfamiliar to many at first, it has become known and a common practice that Officer Brandon is in the school and there is no longer concern because he's a friendly face to all. He's built strong relationship with all the employees, many of the students, and that not only reflects well on our organization, but it reflects well on our entire local government. 
In 2014, the Novi Police Department implemented a new initiative to reduce crime and traffic crashes at high incident locations and intersections throughout the community. This data-driven approach to crime and traffic safety, also known as DDAX, focuses on specific times and locations where crime and traffic crashes occur. The area of Pontiac Trail and Beck Road is one such intersection and area which has been identified as a zone. Officer Brandon routinely volunteers to police this zone, and his own personal efforts in the last several months has resulted in 220 traffic stops and more than 30 arrests, far more than any other officer working in this area. Due in part to his efforts, traffic crashes in the Pontiac Trail and Beck area are down by 7% and targeted crimes such as home, inv home invasion, motor vehicle theft, and unlawfully stealing of a motor vehicle, those crimes are down 58%. For his hard work and dedication in the area of community-oriented policing, I am most proud to recognize Officer Jim Brandon with our Community Policing Award. Congratulations. Firefighters Eric Hanser and Ian Patterson. Yeah. With years of practical experience, wisdom, and extensive backgrounds in education, fire, and EMS, and a drive to help train the future of our fire service. Firefighters Eric Hanser and Ian Patterson have committed for the past several years to assist filling the needs for training proctors and instructors at the Farmington Hills Fire Academy, a local training institute that has helped shape the excellence of not only the Novi Fire Department, but fire departments throughout this region and throughout the state they are recognized as one of the highest achieving academies for not only firefighter, but the delivery of emergency medical services. With this outstanding dedication to the fire service, the Farmington Hills Fire Academy, with the assistance of firefighters Patterson and Hanser, have helped develop some of the highest trained with some of the highest scores of graduating firefighters. For this, we would like to recognize firefighters Hanser and Patterson with a letter of commendation and offer our sincere thanks and appreciation for their hard work and dedication towards sustained excellence and growing our next generation of fire service leaders. Congratulations. Lieutenant Jonathan Gerns Hazlitt, Fire Protections Officers Scott Perry, Kevin Pierce, Ryan Byrne, Matthew Markin, Brian Luke, and Firefighter Eric Nyberg. On November 7, 2014, the Novi Fire Department was called to the Assyrian Cancer Center at St. John's Providence Park here for a patient trapped in the radiation treatment room due to a malfunctioning door. Upon arrival, Lieutenant Gerns Hazlitt was advised that the system had multiple malfunctions, a total loss of power, hydraulic system failure, and a damaged mechanism for manually opening this 3,000-pound door. Gerns Hazlitt quickly determined that multiple issues would not allow for manually opening the door and additional resources would be needed. He was assisted by fire protection officers Perry, Pierce, Byrne, Mark and Luke, and firefighter Nyberg, all who worked together seamlessly by utilizing heavy-duty jacks to slowly and methodically open the door. Although the patient and staff were not in immediate danger, there was increased anxiety as the patient was experiencing difficulty breathing. Gerns, along with the nursing staff, kept the patient calm until the fire crews could gain access. 
Due to the members remaining calm and with concise teamwork, they were able to successfully open the door and secure the entry without damaging this $2 million system. For this, we recognize Lieutenant Jonathan Gerns Hazlitt, Fire Protection Officers Perry, Pierce, Byrne, Markin, Luke, and Firefighter Eric Nyberg with a letter of commendation and thank them for their efforts. Officer Bob Menar. In the early morning hours of August 27th, Officer Menar was dispatched to a breaking and entering alarm at Court Furniture on Grand River Avenue. After finding the business secure, he noticed an individual walking along the shoulder of Grand River, and due to the recent alarm and the time of day, Officer Menar investigated the individual. The male explained that he was walking home after shopping at Walmart. A check of the subject showed an outstanding warrant for his arrest, and he was taken into custody, and his backpack he was carry carrying was searched instant to arrest. The search revealed numerous new items, which the subject did not have a receipt for, and that Officer Menar was able to confirm with Walmart employees that were in fact stolen. Also recovered from the backpack was a proximity access card for a business called Blazant. Officer Menar was aware that this business was recently burglarized and numerous items were taken. This information was turned over to Novi police detectives, and based upon the information and evidence recovered by Officer Menar, Joseph Dominguez was charged with larceny in a building and breaking and entering. He pled guilty on November 14th, and he is currently awaiting sentencing. Due to his thoroughness, conscientiousness, conscientiousness and initiative, Officer Menar is awarded a merit citation for his outstanding efforts. Could I please ask Christian Kiribe and Cheryl Kiribe to join me? On July 4th, 2014, just a little past midnight, while temporarily staying at the Staybridge Suites, located near St. John's Providence Park Hospital, Cheryl Kiribe smelled and noticed smoke in an adjacent room. She immediately alerted the hotel desk and requested that they call 911 to report the suspected fire. Christian Kiribe, her husband, pulled the fire alarm to alert other occupants of the dangers only to find out it was not working. He quickly used a fire extinguisher to put out the flames. It was discovered that a wall-mounted fluorescent light had shorted out and ignited the plastic light covering, producing a large amount of snow, smoke and flames. The hotel's fire alarm was not operational at the time because the fire department, or excuse me, the fire, the management had shut the system down after a power outage and had failed to return its operation when the hotel reopened. Without the quick action of the Kiribes to prevent additional damage and alert the residents and the fire department, the outcome could have been devastating to life and property. For this, I would like to recognize Christian and Cheryl Kiribe with the Civilian Citation Award for their quick thinking and thoughtless act of courage in the face of potential danger. Thank you very much.
Captain Johnson. You're the only one. Captain Tom Johnson has devoted over 23 years of his professional service as a Novi firefighter, but also as a member and leader and teacher for the Western Wayne County Hazardous Material Team. His service on this specialized team has not only benefited the communities represented in Western Wayne County, but also has served the community of Novi, providing his knowledge, his expertise to not only our first emergency responders, but as a guide for our command staff on numerous high hazardous incidents. His wealth of information and knowledge in fire and EMS and hazardous materials responses, along with his enthusiasm to pass on his experience and techniques in dealing with his, these incidents, has inspired multiple generations of emergency responders, not only here in Novi, but also on several fire departments who make up the footprint of the Western Wayne County Hazardous Material Team and many of their surrounding communities. For this dedication to community safety, training, and ex expertise and experience, we would like to recognize Captain Thomas Johnson with the Individual Achievement Award, and we thank him for his time representing our Novi and showing what a true teacher he can be and know that he has prepared our next generation of future emergency responders due to his dedication and his commitment to the craft that is embedded in him forever. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> Officer Bob Menard, Officer Eric Tapia, and Officer Brandon Bittis. On December 16th, these officers were dispatched on a disturbance involving a male who was wielding a knife and had cut one person. The officers arrived on the scene within two minutes and immediately identified the suspect. He was known to officers as a result of his numerous contacts, extensive criminal history, and past violent behavior in his neighborhood, but also with Novi officers. Upon seeing their approach, the suspect attempted to run away, but these officers pursued him and with a short distance, were able to take him, wrestle him to the ground, and place him in handcuffs. Immediately, he would not comply, but as a result of their training, they were able to place him in the handcuffs, and a utility knife was recovered at the scene. The suspect was charged with felony felonious assault and resisting and obstructing arrest, and is currently awaiting trial in Oakland County Circuit Court. Due to their outstanding performance, experience, training, and their commitment under difficult conditions and exposure to physical danger, Officers Menar, Tapia, and Bittis are hereby awarded a merit citation. Please join me in congratulating these brave officers for apprehending this violent felon. Chrisette Logan and Raghad Al Muhammad. If you could please join us. On September 24th, 2014, at approximately 9.19 p.m., Chrisette Logan and Raghad Al Muhammad on-duty shift employees at the Walden Wood Retirement Village noticed and smelled smoke in the second floor hallway and began to investigate the source. Finding the source and odor emanating from apartment 203, they entered using the master key once no answer was obtained from knocking. They immediately activated the 911 system. Upon entering, they observed a 77-year-old male who had slumped over on a stool in front of the stove. 
They attempted to remove the man from the residence to the hallway, but were unsuccessful due to his size, and they advised the fire department officials upon their arrival of his location. The source of the smoke and the odor had been from food overcooking on the stove and an overmedicated individual who was treated by not only the Novi Fire Department, but community EMS. He was eventually transported to Providence Park Hospital here in Novi and was later released with only minor injuries. For their quick thinking and bravery, we would like to recognize Chrisette Logan and Rahag Al-Mahmed with a Civilian Citation Award for their thoughtless act of courage in the face of extreme danger. Congratulations. Officer Amanda Kulikowski and Officer John Corder. <clears throat> On January 8th of 2014, officers Kulikowski and Corder were dispatched to an embezzlement complaint at Art Van Furniture. While investigating this complaint, they noticed that the suspect lived near the CVS store at 14 Mile and Novi Road. This store had been robbed a couple days prior before the embezzlement complaint was filed. Further investigation revealed that the embezzlement suspect matched the description of the robbery suspect. This in information was turned over to Novi police investigators who eventually followed up on this lead. The suspect was eventually arrested on an outstanding warrant and confessed to not only the CVS robbery, but the embezzlement from Art Van Furniture. The suspect, Brian Stovall, was charged with one count of armed robbery and one count of felony embezzlement. He is currently awaiting trial in Oakland County Circuit Court. Officers Kulikowski and Corder are hereby awarded a merit citation due to their thoroughness, conscientiousness, and determination in solving these felony crimes. Congratulations. Lindy Afsari and Rylan Justice. This is truly one of those cases where the Novi Police and Fire Departments are called upon for some extraordinary circumstances from time to time. On September 22nd of 2014, at approximately 6 p.m., the police and fire departments were dispatched to the area of Moorgate Street for an assist citizen on a bird struck in a tree. Upon arriving, Lieutenant Josh Bunsey, Police Sergeant Mike Warren, Firefighters Matt Blamey and Justin Jacobs were met by Ms. Afsari and Justice, whom explained that they were climbing the trees and came face to face with a very large bird, a red-tailed hawk as we would soon learn, that had been hanging upside down nearly 25 feet from a leather strap tied to his talon. These young ladies quickly told their parents, who contacted 911. Upon further investigation, it was discovered that the bird, Carlos, was in fact a prized and trained hunting falcon who had been missing for more than five hours. The falcon's owner, Greg Agustin, advised Lieutenant Bunsey of the issue and Carlos's worth. Members of the fire department assisted Mr. Agustin with the use of an extension ladder and the removal of Carlos from his predicament. Without these young ladies' quick action, this result could have been bleak for Carlos. For their actions, we would like to thank and recognize Ms. Lindsay F. Sare and Ms. Ryland Justice with a civilian award and thank them for their act of kindness to one of our feathered citizens. Thank you. Officer Michael Daisley. <laughs> On 
On July 7, 2014, shortly past midnight, Officer Daisley was on a DDAX patrol assignment in the Springs apartment complex due to recent targeted thefts from vehicles. While driving through the parking lot near Building 16, he observed a Ford F-150 that was missing three tires. Officer Daisley continued to check the lot when he noticed a vehicle with fogged windows. Upon investigating the vehicle further, he located three individuals hiding inside. The subjects were detained, and an initial investigation revealed the vehicle had contained a four-way lug wrench and numerous lug nuts from the F-150 Officer Daisley had found moments earlier. All three suspects were taken into custody and charged with felony larceny from a motor vehicle. When they appeared at trial, all three pled guilty, due in large part to the strength and thoroughness of Officer Daisley's investigation. Please join me in congratulating and recognizing Officer Michael Daisley with a merit citation for his outstanding performance during the investigation of this incident. Lieutenant Remo Oliverio, Lieutenant Jonathan Gerns Hazlitt, Fire Protection Officer Kevin Pierce, and Fire Protection Officer Patrick Deneau. On Thursday, February 13, 2014, shortly after 11 a.m., the Novi Fire Department was alerted to 12 Oaks Mall and dispatched to Hellsburg Diamonds for a possible heart attack. Upon arrival, Engine Crew 1, Lieutenant John Gerns, and Fire Protection Officer Kevin Pierce located Tiffany Ramsey yelling for help in the parking lot as she did CPR on 56-year-old Mr. Ern Ernest Owensby for approximately five minutes prior to the Fire Department's arrival. Engine 1 crew, Fire Protection Officer Pierce and Gerns, assumed patient care, continued CPR, and utilized two shocks from the automatic external defibrillator. Lieutenant Remo Oliverio and Fire Protection Officer Patrick Deneau arrived and immediately began assisting Pierce and Gerns. The patient regained a pulse and respiration prior to transport. After several days of observation and treatment, Mr. Owensby was eventually released from Providence Park Hospital due in large part, according to the medical professionals, to the initial on-scene care provided by Ms. Ramsey and responding fire personnel. Without Ms. Ramsey's quick and thoughtful actions, first responders may not have been able to locate or render continued care, resulting in the saving of his life. For this, I am proud to award Lieutenants Remo Oliverio, Jonathan Gerns Hazlitt, Fire Protection Officer Kevin Pierce, and Fire Protection Officer Patrick Deneau with the Fire Department Life Saving Award. And last, but certainly by no means least, Ms. Tiffany Ramsey. If you are here, if you could please join me. Thank you for your dedication. Sergeant John Nelson, Officer Jason Meyer, Officer Steve Patterson, and Officer Michael Giacino. On August 19, 2014, officers responded to an address on Sutton Court in regards to a threats complaint. The mother of a 23-year-old male reported her son was highly agitated, suicidal, and had threatened her with a knife. The mother feared her son would harm himself or someone else. 
While she was on the phone with a 911 dispatcher, her son went into the basement where a firearm was stored. Officers Patterson and Jacino were the first officers on the scene, and they immediately escorted the mother out of the home to a safe location. Their initial investigation revealed the suspect had barricaded himself in the basement and refused to leave. Sergeant Nelson and Officer Meyer arrived within minutes and began the process of speaking with the male to calm him down and defuse the situation. Over the next 45 minutes, Nelson and Meyer were able to engage the son in conversation and to calm his emotions. Through the use of their strong communication skills and crisis intervention, intervention techniques, Nelson and Meyer were able to convince the subject to peacefully surrender and seek medical treatment at St. John's Providence Park Hospital. For their outstanding performance under difficult circumstances, Sergeant John Nelson and Officer Jason Meyer are awarded a merit citation, and Officers Stephen Patterson and Michael Giacino are awarded a unit citation. Congratulations. Lieutenant Gerns Hazlitt, Fire Protection Officer Zahi Kassab, and Officer Lou Bigliardi. On Wednesday, March 12, 2014, at 926 AM, the Novi Fire Department was dispatched to a structure fire on Old Orchard Drive in the city of Novi. Within six minutes of the initial call, Engine 1 and Rescue 3 and Novi Police Department units arrived on scene to find a working structure fire in a multi-residential, two-story condominium complex. Under heavy smoke and fire conditions, and while setting up for initial fire suppression activities, Lieutenant Gerns Haslick, Fire Protection Officer Kassab, and Officer Bigliardi risked their personal safety to assist in the rescue and evacuation of a total of 10 people in this six condo unit, including one resident who was found to have serious injuries sustained from attempting to remove a burning mattress from her a condominium. The victim was transported to the St. John's Providence Park Hospital with minor injuries and was later released. All residences were accounted for and a missing cat was even found in good shape. With their outstanding, without their outstanding performance in a very difficult situation, the outcome may have resulted in serious injury or turn fatal for these residents. Due to their actions, we would like to thank and recognize Lieutenant Jonathan Gerdens Hazlitt, Fire Protection Officer Zahi Kassab, and Officer Louis Bigliardi with the Departmental Citation Award and thank them for their continued efforts and actions to safeguard citizens of Novi. Congratulations. Officer Bob Menar, Officer Michael Daisley, Officer Alan Hashem, and Officer Joshua Johnson. On Christmas Eve, Officers Menar, Daisley, Hashem, and Johnson were dispatched to a residence to assist in the hospitalization of a male subject who had been deemed legally incapacitated. This court order requires law enforcement to take the suspect subject into custody for treatment of their illness. The suspect had, a, had an extensive criminal history with several assaults against law enforcement officers, his family, and the public. Upon arriving at the residence, the subject's mother advised the officers that earlier in the day, her son had slashed her tires on her vehicle with a large knife. The subject was currently in his room, and according to his mother, he could be harmed, and he could be armed with a knife. When the officers entered the residence, the subject immediately exited his bedroom in an excited state and charged towards the officers. He was extremely agitated and confrontational. 
He also screamed that he was going to kill the officers before the night was over. As he approached the officers, he picked up a vacuum and hurled it in their direction. Officer Menard deployed his taser, but it had no effect. The subject then became even more physically combative. The officers had to force a set of handcuffs on the individual to restrain him. And even after he was handcuffed, the subject continued to be physically combative by headbutting Officer Hashem. All of these officers displayed the highest degree of professionalism and personal restraint during the critical incident and are therefore awarded a unit citation. Congratulations. Officer Steve Patterson and Officer Craig Chismar. Officer Chismar recently retired from the organization and could not be with us tonight. But on July 17th, Officer Patterson and Chismar were dispatched to the Pavilion Court Apartment Complex on a report of a male being chased by a second male. The subject being pursued was screaming for someone to call the police. And just prior to their arrival, a second person had called 911, and this caller reported that she had been shot in her apartment and needed medical assistance. Officers Patterson and Chismar arrived on scene and approached the residence, which was a second floor apartment. Prior to entering the apartment, they could hear people yelling inside. With their weapons drawn, they opened the door and observed a male standing at the top of the stair. They ordered the subject to show his hands and walk down the stairs towards them. Instead of following the officer's commands, the subject picked up a pistol which was on a shelf near him. Both officers used loud verbal commands ordering him to drop the weapon. The officers were able to convince the male to drop the weapon and he was taken into custody shortly thereafter. A female was located inside the residence who had been shot several times by the male. The original male who was being chased was also shot multiple times and received medical attention after driving to police headquarters. Both victims were provided with comprehensive medical attention and after several weeks were released after the attempts on their lives. The male subject was charged with multiple accounts of attempted murder and is currently awaiting trial in Oakland County Circuit Court. I'm honored to award these two brave officers for their dedication, commitment, and their restraint and for the quick efforts in defusing this potentially deadly force situation. Congratulations. <laughs> Officer Michael Daisley. You might just want to grab a chair up front here. The night, the night of October 12th, 2014 was an unusually cold night with the temperatures in the low 30s. But please keep in mind, it was early October. On that evening, Officer Daisley responded to a missing persons complaint, a report of a female Alzheimer's patient who had wandered from her home. He spoke with the male resident who reported that his 82-year-old wife had wandered away from the home sometime during the night in an unknown time frame. According to the husband, his wife could have been missing for up to approximately three hours, and she was only dressed in her nightgown. Officer Daisley and his canine partner, Aries, began tracking the female. The track led from the residence, through several backyards, into a wooded area, and through wetlands. Eventually, the track led to the pathway along M5, west to the rear of Meadowbrook Elementary. Officer Daisley and Ara's track was well in excess of a mile when they located the female underneath the deck to the rear of our residence. Members of the Novi Fire Department immediately responded to provide patient care for exposure. Had Officer Daisley and K-9 Eras not located her, she most likely would have succumbed to hypothermia. 
I am very honored to recognize Officer Michael Daisley in K-9 Aries and thereby issue a life-saving award. Congratulations. Well done. Lieutenant Eric Zinzer. The department's leadership award is given to individuals who consistently display the highest quality of leadership and excellence over a sustained period of time. In August of 2012, Lieutenant Zinzer volunteered to assist the Public Safety Administration as the, as the Acting Assistant Chief of Operations due, the, due to the absence of Assistant Chief Loria. During his tenure, Lieutenant Zinzer handled multiple tasks above and beyond his normal duties. He co-chaired the Public Safety Awards Board. He coordinated the Public Safety Awards Ceremony in 2014. He was responsible and coordinated the redesign of the briefing room. He budgeted and oversaw the complete removal of our granular bullet trap material at the Firearms Training Center. He managed our work with an architectural firm as the department's representative for the Public Safety Facility Needs Analysis. Eric also provided excellent planning, direction, and coordinating for major events such as the Susan G. Coleman three-day walk, as well as the Michigan or Fifth Third Michigan State Fair. Lieutenant Zinzer is always willing to take on additional duties to ensure the safety of the community, his fellow officers, and he sets a positive example for all to follow. As a result of his consistent ex excellent leadership and outstanding performance, it is my honor to afford Lieutenant Zinzer the department's leadership award. Thank you. Appreciate it. Detective Sergeant Scott Batens, Detective Steve Baylog, Detective Mike Wilson, Detective Christy Grunwald, Detective Randy Mintz, Detective Mike Bender, Detective Jeff Brown, and Detective Todd Anger. On January 13, 2014, then Officer Baylog was dispatched to a residence in the Country Place condominium complex on a report of a female who was injured and not breathing. Upon arrival, it was apparent that the victim, Bernice Schaufel, was a victim of homicide. Officer Baylog and several other officers secured the crime scene, cordoned off the immediate area, and requested assistance from Novi police investigators. While monitoring the perimeter, Officer Baylog observed a nearby resident acting suspiciously. Officer Baylog engaged the subject in conversation, and the subject became even more suspicious. Officer Baylog immediately notified Detectives Wilson and Brown of his observations, and they conducted a more in-depth interview at the police department. The subject was identified as Peter Gerard Jones, and investigators learned that Jones was on parole for a 1998 manslaughter and armed robbery charge out of Wayne County. Jones was residing at his sister's residence, which was adjacent to the Shawful residence. Based upon information obtained in Detective Brown and Wilson's interview and evidence recovered from the Shawful residence, Detective Anger was able to draft and swear to a search warrant for Jones's residence. Inside his home, detectives located a bloody dish towel, extra watch links, and a key. These items were found hidden in the rafters next to Jones's bedroom. The dish towel matched similar towels found in the Schaffel kitchen. The key belonged to a fire safe found in the victim's closet, and the extra watch links matched the links on the victim's wrist. Michigan State Police forensic scientists also matched a shoe impression to a pair of shoes recently worn by Jones. During the initial investigation, these men and women worked 36 hours straight to process and log evidence, author and execute search warrants, interview potential witnesses and family members, as well as following up on additional leads. On January 15, 
Peter Jones was far charged with first-degree premeditated murder. And on September 12th, Jones was convicted of first-degree premeditated murder and felony murder for the stabbing and brutal suffocation of Bernice Schaufel. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Due to their outstanding teamwork, relentless follow-up, and constant reassessment, these officers brought a dangerous predator to justice and offered the family of Bernice Schaufel closure to their mother's senseless death. It is with the highest honor that I hereby award Detective Steve Baylog with a department citation and Detective Sergeant Scott Batens, Detective Mike Wilson, Detective Jeff Brown, Detective Randy Mintz, Detective Christy Grunwald, Detective Michael Bender, and Detective Todd Anger are awarded a unit citation for their outstanding commitment and dedication in bringing justice for the Schaffel family. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Well done. Appreciate it. Detective. Thank you. If I could please have Mr. Jason Porter join me. Jason Porter began his career with the Novi Police Department in March of 2013 and has very quickly proven to be a valuable asset to our public safety team. As our public safety performance analyst, Jason is in charge of all analytical and performance aspects of the Novi Police and Fire Departments. He has been one of the lead architects in developing the department's data-driven approach to crime and traffic safety, DDAC's crime fighting philosophy. This philosophy of resource deployment and data analysis has resulted in a 68% decrease in targeted crimes of home invasion, motor vehicle theft, and larceny from motor vehicles in a targeted area, along with a 41% decrease in traffic crashes in this same area of Nine Mile and Haggerty Road. In addition, as I reported earlier, these efforts have resulted in a 58% decrease in those same targeted crimes in the area of Pontiac Trail and Beck. And the corollary to that is there is a 7% decrease in the traffic crashes in that area as well. This is working so well under Jason's leadership that we're even being told by the city of Wixom that their calls for service in the Pontiac Trail and Beck area, a bordering street, are also significantly down from recent years. In the fall of 2014, Jason was involved in the tracking of a series of armed robberies at local pizza restaurants and party stores in Novi, Farmington Hills, and Livonia. While the perpetrator has yet to be identified, Jason accurately predicted when he would strike and in the area he would strike again. This information was passed on to our investigators and surveillance team members to assist in their investigation. Another of Jason's many duties includes coordination of all of our computer statistics or CompStat reports that we use for our weekly CompStat meetings with command staff from the Novi Police and Fire Departments. Jason Lee recently revised our slides to include splash screens, which allow for the command staff to quickly jump from one part of the presentation to another. He also incorporated the use of Crime View dashboard at all patrol briefings, so our shift commanders are trained in the efficient use of this program, and they're absolutely available and able to provide real-time crime data to their men and women before them hitting the streets. Jason continues to assist in the planning and research area of our department, recently authoring a workload study utilizing what's referred to as the Rule of 60, which was used to justify the need for additional officers and resources. 
Jason Porter always has a can-do attitude. He is always willing to assist any member of our department, regardless of the request. And as chief, I'm often called upon for statistical updates or trends where we may be seeing issues or forecasting into the future. And I know I can always walk to Jason's office and count on him to provide me with the needed information in a timely, positive, and professional fashion. Jason has been instrumental in presenting the early successes of DDACs to technology symposiums throughout our state. He's, host, he's, been, he's presented at the Center for Digital Government and most recently to the Michigan Local Government Manners Association at their Winter Institute. In his free time, Jason is a consistent supporter and volunteer for the Novi Police and Fire Benevolent Association. He volunteers at our annual golf outing and volunteers his time to play on our Police and Fire Benevolent Association hockey team. It is with great pride and great honor that I recognize performance analyst Jason Porter as our 2014 Civilian Employee of the Year. Congratulations. This is, uh, this is a, an, an honor to receive this award. Um, I, I don't think I would be up here if it wasn't for all the men and women of the Novi Police Department. Um, everybody I come in contact with on a day-to-day -day basis, they're always sharing me their experiences, their knowledge. Um, I, I'd like to specifically thank uh, my immediate supervisor, Sergeant Ray, uh, Assistant Chief Hart, and Chief Malloy for kind of giving me the reins on this thing we call crime analysis. and. Uh, as Chief alluded to, it's, it's kind of working here, so um, I'm, I'm honored and thank you very much. <laughs> Lieutenant Todd Sogg, if you could please join me. Lieutenant Todd Sogg began serving the Novi Fire Department in 1997 as a paid on-call firefighter. On December 10, 1999, Lieutenant Sogg was hired as a full-time fire protection officer, and on December 14, 2012, Todd was promoted to his current rank of lieutenant. Lieutenant Sogg has always shown drive and determination that exemplifies a leader among his fellow firefighters. He de demonstrates not only the qualities of a professional member of this public safety team, but he takes the time to train individuals in all aspects of the fire service. Lieutenant Sogg works closely with member, many members of our city staff to help improve the working lifestyle and safety of all employees and citizens of Novi by ensuring the emergency equipment, automatic external defibrillators in all city buildings and all emergency kits are at their highest state of readiness. For the past decade, Lieutenant Sogg has led our file of life program and self-contained breathing apparatus inspection program for the Novi Fire and Police Department members. Lieutenant Sogg has been a valuable member of the Western Wayne County and Michigan Urban Search and Rescue Team, where he was recognized in assisting in numerous emergency situations and collapses. Lieutenant Sogg was recently selected to assume the overall command position during the 2014 Botsford Hospital mock disaster drill for fire and EMS personnel at the Suburban Collection Showplace involving three hospitals, 30-plus fire EMS departments, and 80 victims who were treated from a simulated bomb explosion. Todd recently implemented a new training program for testing and maintaining all of our self-contained breathing apparatus, equipment, and emergency respirator masks with the Lyon Township Fire Department, the South Lyon Fire Department, and more recently, the Milford Fire Department. Todd has been instrumental in helping volunteers at numerous public events throughout the year, the Police and Fire Blood Drive that he coordinates twice a year, the Addicted to Games Not Drugs program, as well as the annual benevolent Police and Fire Golf Outing. Lieutenant Sogg has taken it upon himself to increase his personal leadership knowledge and certifications by completing numerous outside leadership courses and his associate's degree in fire science from Columbia Southern University. Todd is currently working on his bachelor's degree in occupational health and safety from Columbia University. Todd has helped to enhance the current training 
program for all new fire officers, and in September of 2014, he was recognized by his peers as the Public Safety Employee of the Month for his dedication to mentoring new and current fire department personnel. Lieutenant Sog has recently been accepted and began his studies in the 2015 Fire Staff and Command program at Eastern Michigan University. For all of his accomplishments, it is truly my honor and privilege to recognize Lieutenant Todd Sog as the 2014 Firefighter of the Year and thank him for his continued dedication to the safety and commitment of our community and for our fire service. Thank you very much. This is an incredible honor. I just want to thank my colleagues. I can't think of a better organization to work for. I love working for the city of Novi, and I'm truly blessed to work here. I want to thank my family for coming today. I especially want to thank uh, Lieutenant Gerns Hazlitt and uh, Captain John Martin. I wouldn't be standing up here if it wasn't for you, Captain. And I appreciate all your leadership. Thank you very much. Officer Bob Menard. As you have obviously heard this evening, Officer Menard consistently demonstrates exceptional job knowledge, is sought out by his fellow officers for guidance, and assists on calls with minimal supervision. He can be relied upon to give his best effort on a consistent and daily basis. His investigations are always very comprehensive and well-organized. Bob shows initiative in all phases of job requirements and can be counted upon to make correct decisions even in difficult situations. He remains active during his shifts and finds creative uses for his free time for preventative patrols. Officer Menard is a member of our field training officer cadre and has helped develop a number of recruits into good, fine police officers. He shows great patience with these recruits and is able to help them even if they are having difficulties in some areas. He is capable of holding himself and the recruits accountable while giving them the feedback they need to keep improving. Officer Menard has also volunteered to be a representative of the Novi Police Department at his alma mater, the University of Michigan Dearborn Career Fair. He has helped present a positive and professional image and has attracted a number of men and women to uh, receive application for the Novi Police Department and for others to enter the law enforcement profession. On February 11, 2014, Officer Menard investigated a bank robbery at the Credit Union Family Service Center. While other officers were checking the area, Officer Menard responded directly to the scene. He started interviewing the manager and teller while ensuring three customers remained on the scene safely for later questioning. He immediately reviewed the closed circuit television and obtained a detailed description of the subject, which he passed on to other responding officers. A possible suspect has been identified in large part to the professional way in which Bob conducted this investigation, and an arrest warrant is pending. On July 6, 2014, Officer Menard, along with several other officers, responded to a fight near the Imagine Theater. One of the subjects involved in the altercation was being treated by fire department medics while a second subject contu continuously tried to interfere with the officers and the treatment as they tended to this injured party. The second subject was warned several times to step away, but he refused to comply with these orders, and eventually Officer Menard arrested the subject for interfering. A third subject grabbed the second sub subject and attempted to free him from Officer Menard's custody, and the third subject had to be forcibly removed from the arrested subject by additional officers. Officer Menard's actions prevented a potentially unsafe scene from becoming dangerously out of control. The suspects were not allowed to create a more hazardous scene for the victim being treated, and no parties were injured despite the irrational behavior of the additional two subjects. On May 5, 2014, Officer Menard responded to an address on Pierre for a neighbor trouble. The investigation revealed that the subject in that investigation had outstanding warrants for his arrest. Officer Menard remained a short distance from the home, believing the wanted subject was eventually going to exit the mobile home a short time later. His hunch was proven correct, 
as the subject eventually exited the rear doorway and jumped down to the, to the grass. Officer Menar confronted the subject who attempted to re-enter the mobile home. He struggled with the subject momentarily and was able to regain after the subject assumed an aggressive fighting posture. Officer Menar grabbed onto the subject's sweatshirt and pulled him out of the doorway and onto the grass and, and took him into custody without further incident. On August 27, 2014, Officer Menar was responding to a second alarm in 40 minutes at court furniture and when he observed the subject wearing a backpack walking down the sidewalk, which I referred to earlier. He stopped the subject at a, after 4 a.m., and as you already know, that resulted in that subject being arrested for not only stolen property, for, but for breaking and entering into a nearby business. In December of 2014, Officer Menard dealt with an emotionally disturbed person twice during the same month. During the first incident, the subject had attempted to use a knife to cut his neighbor. Officer Menard engaged in a short foot pursuit with the suspect who was taken into custody with the help of additional officers. The second case involved the multiple officers we referred to here earlier this evening when Officer Menard attempted to tase the individual. He struggled to get the subject back into custody, but was eventually able to do so. Other officers were able to place him in the handcuffs and, and again, reduce the possibility of any type of additional force or deadly force. All of the cases I have, re I have referenced this evening involving Bob Menard show a common thread, a thread that he's always present at critical incidents and has the ability to take decisive and accurate action to controlled subjects who are committing serious crimes, resisting arrest, and creating unsafe situations. Officer Menar has consistently shown a willingness to deal with difficult situations to keep himself, his fellow officers, and the Novi public safe. He can be relied upon to make good ethical decisions, even under difficult circumstances. He's the type of officer that one hopes will be on scene when circumstances require quick, decisive, and courageous actions. Officer Menard is a self-starter who, as I referenced earlier, needs minimal supervision. He brings a positive atti attitude to his daily work, and his work product is nothing less than excellent. He's the model of consistency and is a positive ro role model for many of his peers to emulate. Officer Menard remains active during sh his shifts and takes aggressive enforcement action when appropriate. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in recognizing Officer Bob Menar as our 2014 Police Officer of the Year. Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, this is truly uh, the highest honor that I've, I've ever gotten uh, being a Novi police officer. Looking around the room, I see a lot of people that have been instrumental in my development as a police officer. Without you guys, I wouldn't be standing up here right now. I do want to give a special thanks to my family for being here tonight, especially my wife, uh, who in my opinion is uh, one of the strongest people in the room. Thank you for all your support and all your love. It means the world to me. Uh, to my parents, thank you for being here. Uh, to my brother, I, I think a, a lot of who I am today is because of you guys. Thank you very much. These types of ceremonies do not happen by accident. I'd like to thank all the members who submitted the respective award nominations and for the hard work and dedication performed by our awards board team for, review, for reviewing and authorizing these most deserved recognition. I'd also like to recognize and thank our administrative assistant, Renee Landis, who spent countless hours preparing the awards this evening. In addition, I'd like to thank Ms. Cheryl Walsh and Ms. Stephanie Schutzler from our Community Relations Department for coordinating tonight's setup, photography, and refreshments. If you could please stand and be recognized for the excellent job you have done. In closing, I'd like to congratulate all department members recognized here this evening and for all of you who appeared tonight in support of your fellow brothers and sisters in the police and fire service. 
here to honor them with your presence and to offer words of praise. I'd also like to thank the family members of our firefighters and police officers who are here this evening and who stand by our teams day and night, not knowing if mom will return home or if dad will make it through the night safely. You all have my highest praise and appreciation, and without you, this would not be possible. To all of you first responders and supporters here this evening, I offer a heartfelt thank you. This concludes our ceremony this evening. May God bless.